Good evening and welcome to all parishioners and visitors to our celebration at Holy Trinity of the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time, where the opportunity exists through you to offer every person in our community a life-changing encounter with Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Trinity. We've reached 81% of our goal of $915,000 for our 111 New Church Roof campaign. There's still time. Get your gifts and pledges in by August 15th so we can begin the project and have it done before winter. We appreciate your urgent and generous support. Today, for the first time, at the offertory, the baskets will be passed around. So a return to somewhat normalcy during the mass also. If you had been dropping your envelope in the basket at the back of church, you'll now be able to drop it as it's passed around in church. Our celebrant for today's mass is Father Chadwick. On this 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the scripture readings are found at number 1246 in the hymnal. The mass setting is mass in honor of St. Ignatius, beginning with the glory to God at number 331. Now let us turn to hymn number 741, Sing of the Lord's Goodness, 741, verses 1 and 2. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins before we celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread? But you had, lead us, had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus I will test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumblings of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there, were on, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like horror frost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. This is number 1383. The Lord gave them bread, 1383. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ. 
assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his apostles were there, they themselves got into the boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What signs can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, I love in the first reading today that we hear the whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. We all do a lot of grumbling in our life at times, don't we? When things don't go our way, when we're irritated by those that we love, when we're irritated by our friends, it's a human tendency to start to grumble, that we all grumble against God sometimes when we don't see his will, that throughout all of salvation history, we see God's will revealed in the present moment, but just the next step, that we don't often see God's overarching theme of where he's going in our lives. And the great thing about this first sentence in the first reading is it says the Israelite community. There were all spiritually Israelites. We're all call Abraham our father in faith. In fact, the word Israel refers to the patriarch Jacob, that Jacob's wrestling with an angel and he wins. And when he wins, the angel says, let me go. 
And Jacob says, no. And the angel says, what's your name? And he responds with Jacob. And the angel looks at him and says, you'll no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, because Israel means one who struggles with God. That all of us struggle in one way, shape, or form to understand what God is trying to do in our lives. That our ways aren't always his. Because just like the disciples in the gospel today, we often look for bread that perishes. We don't look for the bread that gives us eternal life. That Paul tells us in the second reading, I declare and testify in the Lord, you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. That that's not what you've learned in Christ. We look for Christ to be our model. We look for Christ to give us the bread of life. And he not just provides for our physical needs, the Lord gives us everything we've ever received. The Lord provides for us spiritually, and he did give us the bread from heaven. We hear in the first reading that the Israelites were promised by the Lord to eat flesh in the twilight hours of the day, and every morning they'd eat their fill of bread. Every morning, the Lord provides his flesh under the appearance of bread for us to receive daily mass here at Holy Trinity. Every Sunday we're nourished by his flesh under the appearance of bread to follow him more and more closely so we can no longer live the old way of life before we knew him. Rather, we go to him every day to be able to receive eternal life. This eternal life is always communion with God and how blessed we are to be able to receive him under the guise of the Eucharist every Sunday. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated to the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Standing in the Lord's presence, we place our trust in God as we call to mind our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, that we may be driven to feed the hungry, those afflicted with spiritual hunger, who seek purpose and a mission in life, as well as those suffering from the material hunger, who long for full stomachs and adequate nutrition, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders, that they respond to those in need with compassion and assistance, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's generosity from age to age to all who call upon the Lord may be a model for us as we are called upon those in need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been assailed by storms this summer, hurricanes or tornadoes, floods or droughts, and for all who help them in their time of trauma, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that as we follow St. Paul's charge to put our new selves 
we may resolve with the grace of God to live in our lives in righteousness and truth, we pray. For all of us, having been baptized, especially Clara Jane Loosebrock, who in thanksgiving for being able to be called a child of God, may the gift of the Holy Spirit they receive be a source of peace and calm during the storms in their lives, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may find joy and love in the eternal kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for us, the people of the parish which this Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Archbishop Kelleher, today's his 90th birthday, that he may be continued to giving grace by the Lord to follow him more closely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you sent the bread of life to nourish us always. Instill in us such generosity and thankfulness that the bread we offer to those in need may reflect our thankfulness to you for all that we have received. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of the spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, given you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, 
we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Cecilia, Agnes, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my life.
For those that would like to receive communion on the tongue, please come to my line after the ushers and let the ushers know that you'll be receiving on the tongue and we'll be happy to assist you in that way. For those who are unable to receive our Lord sacramentally, let us enter into spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Hymn number 1029, I am the bread of life, 1029. <laughs>
Number 1031, Taste and See, 1031.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.